let's find the future value of regular payments into an account. So let's pretend that a person wants to put a fixed amount in an account at a fixed rate over many, many years, and they want to do that monthly. They're not going to take any money out until the end of the scenario, and they're not going to change their payment amount over time. So to find out the future value of all of that work, we have a formula for that, and we'll use FV for future value. Sitting out front here is the regular payment. For us, it'll usually be monthly. Inside the formula, we have an R value, which is our percentage rate, but it needs to go in as a decimal. N is, for us, usually 12 for monthly. T will be the number of years for our scenario. And so a lot of this is very similar to stuff that you've already seen. So to make this happen, we would take the payment and multiply by this large fraction. In the numerator of the fraction, we have the quantity, 1 plus R over N, that quantity raised to the NT, and then subtract 1. That's the entire numerator. And then in the denominator, we have another fraction. And that denominator's fraction is the rate divided by the N value, usually 12 for us. So let's see how this would work. Let's say that we have this scenario where a person decides to deposit $125 each month in an account that earns 6.4%, and that's never going to fluctuate. If they do this for 20 years, what will be the future value of the account and how much interest will they have earned? To make this work, we are looking for the future value, sometimes called the maturity value. The payment that they make each month is $125. So we will have that as a multiplier on the front of our equation outside of this giant fraction. Inside the fraction in the numerator we'll have the quantity 1 plus and we need to make the um, comparison of the interest rate and the number of payments per year. Our interest rate was 6.4 percent and as a decimal we would get 0 0.064 for that. We are making monthly payments, so our n value will be 12. That quantity needs to be raised to the exponent that consists of the n value of 12 being multiplied by the number of years that are going to go by. And in our case, that's 20. Then the last thing that we need in the numerator is the subtraction of 1. So we have the entire numerator set up with the quantity 1 plus, 0 0.064 divided by 12, all raised to the 12 times 20, and then subtract 1. And then in the denominator, we have a fraction within the denominator of 0 0.064 divided by 12. Then we need to do this calculation with a calculator or Desmos or something like that. Again, I recommend that you do the exponent portion first. 12 times 20 would be 240 payments the person is going to make. And if I were you, I would do the numerator of the fraction first in the calculator with parentheses 1 plus 0 0.064 divided by 12. Close those parentheses and raise that quantity to the 240, then subtract 1, hit return. I would take that answer from the numerator and divide by parentheses 0 0.064 divided by 12, close those parentheses and hit return, and then multiply by the $125 payment. That's one way to get the job done. When I do that, I get a future value of $60,000. $52.52 to the nearest penny. $60,572.52. So that takes care of the future value of the account after 20 years. This is including all of the payments that the person made as well as any interest that they earned. So the second question was how much interest will they have earned? We need to go find that yet. To find the interest amount, we need to compare how much money they put in versus how much they will get out. So interest earned. Well, we know how much they get out at the end 
pretending like taxes and things like that don't exist. But let's find out how much they put in. They made 20 years worth of payments. So that's 20 years times 12 is 240 payments of $125 each. So the total that they contributed would be 240 times 125. Let's see, 240 times 125. They contributed, that's a very nice number, $30,000. That's how much they put in over all of that time. And so then the interest earned would be the gap or the subtraction between $60,572.52 and the $30,000 that they put in. And when you do that subtraction, you find out that they earned $30,572.52. That seems pretty good. Pretty nice amount for them to have. Um, in this case, they had a very high interest rate and they let a lot of time go by as well.